Hello, uh, welcome to lecture. Well, actually, it's the night after lecture, but I'm adding this screen capture of the intro stuff. So here we go. Nick made a laser engraved clock. Naruto theme. Yay! And uh, here's our schedule. I'll let you know about the total synthesis stuff later, starting next week. Uh, we're going to continue to collect data this week. And remember, you can get extra credit. Check out that podcast Nick and then uh, lab videos check those out I got a banana oil GCMS of banana oil video and then entrance and exit question key I'm gonna put some more up tonight from today check out our mechanism database great chapter handouts this lecture outline you're already looking at that <laughs> and then lecture powerpoints yeah that's what I'm doing right now Oh, wait, no, lecture PowerPoints. That's for the uh, chapter 14 through 16. You can click through those and check out what I put on there. Download it so you can animate it. That's it. All right, enjoy the lecture. Bye. Get back to our linear conjugated pi bond. Molecular orbit. So there's this theory of bonding in which you don't look at uh, like a double bond as just being a single double bond, and that's a single single bond, single double bond, and they're not related to each other at all. There's a theory of bonding where you say, well, actually, we can have electrons in a bond move all the way across the molecule. So that's why it's called molecular orbitals. So we're going to look at the this bonding model and see how electrons can be visualized across the entire molecule. And to get the accurate um, molecular orbitals for a molecule, you need to do some like advanced like quantum mechanical calculations. But for certain molecules like linear conjugated pi bonding, you can, you can use little tricks to get the uh, bonding orbitals and for just simple ones. And I'm gonna teach you that and it's gonna seem like this is interesting, I don't know why we're doing it, but then I'll show you some reactions that you can predict products with it. So here we go. So first off, think of it this way. You have um, it's energy on this scale, and let's look at an easy one, a four carbon molecule, butadiene, which last lecture we said, oh, there's some resonance. That's Resonance is another, like, orbital theory. And so because of considering resonance, we'd say, oh, there's partial pi bond here. And that makes this bond a little shorter than a single bond. And then this one's losing some pi bonding because it's sharing, so it's a little longer than an isolated double bond. Okay, so if I count across this molecule, how many uh, p orbitals do I have to make the pi bond? How many p atomic orbitals are involved? So those carbons are all sp2 carbons, right? And sp2 carbons have three sp2 atomic orbitals, uh, hybrid orbitals. And then we say, oh, they have a p orbital coming in and out of the point, right? So each sp2 carbon has how many p orbitals? Just one. So, and you can visualize it like on, a, on its side, right? Okay, so how many p atomic orbitals does this molecule have? One p orbital here, one there, one there, one there. So four p atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals, it's got four of them. And then uh, we're going to take those four p atomic orbitals and mix them up to make molecular orbitals, orbitals that go across the molecule. So what would you guess? If I have four p atomic orbitals, how many molecular orbitals total will I make? What do you guess, Santos? P orbitals. You have four p orbitals. How many molecular orbitals do you think you'll get from those? Just first guess, top of your head. Uh, four. Four. Got it. Yeah. So your number of molecular orbitals, we're going to get four molecular orbitals. Does 
it's always that way. However many atomic orbitals you use, you get that many molecular orbitals. Not hard. Okay, so let's imagine now each of these carbons. So I have like carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, and carbon four. The one, two, three, four there. They they have their p orbitals. So the p orbitals, I'm going to represent them like this. Right? And those p orbitals all can combine to make a single, oh, early, I'm sorry, a portion of these p orbitals can all combine to make a molecular orbital. So this here is our lowest energy molecular orbital. We'll call it like molecular orbital one. That'll be our lowest energy one. And it turns out that this particular low energy orbital, all of the p orbitals are in phase. So you'll shade one side and you'll keep it the same all the way across. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it means this. You can draw like four dots here. One, two, three, four dots. And it means these four p orbitals, the portions of them on this lower energy orbital, they can all combine in phase and add together. So you have like a situation like this. So I can show it here, like how they're all in phase and they'll come together and they'll bond. And this is be like when they're all added together is how it looks. <clears throat> so this is a pi bond across the whole molecule, a molecular orbital. And it can hold two electrons that spread around all four atoms. Okay, and as far as the, the orbitals, you can have two orbitals that are in phase. And when you add them together, you'll get the one bonding orbital. So that's a bonding orbital. like we saw here, it's completely bonding. What do you think happens if you have two orbitals and they're out of phase? Do you think they bond? No, we think of them as anti-bonding. Have you guys heard that before, anti-bonding? So they don't add up. So this one is anti-bonding. Oh, I should check my feed. Any questions in Twitterverse? Mark's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy Hobbit Mahol. I like the name. Filthy Hobbit. <laughs> Muggers. <laughs> We're doing. And then uh, this guy right here, is it uh, bonding it? It's anti-bonding, and we call the, the space between those two a node. So it turns out there's, we say there's zero probability of finding an electron between these two in this node. There's also a node in every pure little right here. There's zero chance of finding an electron at the center there, but somehow an electron can get from the upper area to the lower area. And that's pretty cool, because that means an electron has mass, and it can go from one area to another, but never predicted to be between. So that's like Star Trek beam me up stuff, right? So maybe we can do that with more than electrons. They've, they've shown evidence for protons. So you got electrons and protons, and you can get an atom and a molecule. And then all of a sudden, when you're eating dinner at that restaurant, and you're done, and you're on vacation, and you don't have a fridge in the hotel room, or don't have a microwave, 
You can just say, oh yeah, beam that to the local shelter. Boom, it's there. Or FedEx, Amazon, beam it over. Think how much fuel you save. That would be a question. But so far, we can only send electrons in a very short distance. <laughs> Small distance. So we'll see, though, maybe in the future. All right, so there's a node there. And uh, the, it's kind of weird, too, like how the phases add and this, and it's particle and electron. But remember, the, the, the thing with this is that electrons can have particle properties and wave properties. And you can think about math, like how a sine wave can cancel and they're out of phase. So it's the wave properties that we see the nodes and all that. Okay, so I got my lowest energy molecular orbital, but how many total molecular orbitals am I gonna make? Four. Four, yeah. And so these guys are gonna add together again in a different way. And that would be molecular orbital two. And then how many more? Another one. Molecular orbital three, and then finally a fourth way. Okay. And on exam two, I'm gonna ask you to make these up. And with practice, you'll get it. They're not hard. But the ones that I'll give you aren't are that hard. Okay, so it all has to do with how we shade the orbitals. So how are we gonna shade these the correct way? I gave you a sheet of paper last time. Do you remember the lecture? It's in the chapter 14 handouts. It's this guy right here. Um, for those of you at home, this is on the chapter 14 through 16 pi bonding conjugation, pi bond conjugation PowerPoint. It's on slide. Slide three. Okay, so I have a set of rules you can follow that will help you fill this in correctly. And these rules only really apply for linear conjugated pi bonding, <laughs> simple ones too. So, but it's something to do and you learn about molecular orbital bonding, pi bonding a little bit. All right, so uh, the first thing it says to do is give all pure orbitals on one side the same phase orientation. So. For example, uh, C1 has the lower end shaded. So as I go up, I'll just shade the lower every time. There we go. All right, I'm almost there. I've filled in a lot of these guys. Uh, step two says give all the few orbitals on the other side alternating phases. So on the left side, they're all shaded on the bottom. On the right side, you shade the bottom, and then what do I shade the next one? Bottom or top, James, what do you think? Top. Top, yeah. And then Kaylee in the next one? Bottom. Bottom. Sarah? Top. Top. Okay. We're about to get to the Sudoku's. Okay, so. And then the lowest energy molecular orbital is all in phase with no nodes. I'll say it, we'll talk about the nodes shortly too. So this lower energy one, I already gave it away, huh? It's all in phase. Oh, and then uh, we'll keep track of the nodes. Let's say I'll put it here. Let's say nodes. So remember, a node is when two pure orbitals are out of phase. So. Rakan, does this first molecular orbital, does it have any nodes? No, because these two are in phase, these two are in phase, they're in phase. So zero nodes for that one. Okay. <coughs> then it says lowest energy, all in phase with no nodes. The second lowest energy molecular orbital has one node, the third has two nodes, etc. So we need to choose shadings here so that it results in just one node for these guys. And then, Morgan, how many do you think, how many nodes is this going to have? Zero, one, two. two. And then, next up, Darcy? Three. That guy has three nodes, yep. Okay, so that's going to help us determine how we need to fill this in. And there's one other bit of information we need to know to help us fill it in, complete, to have all the information we need. So the next thing we need to know is we need to know the center symmetry. 
center. Oh. I haven't looked at Twitch lately. Is there any questions out there? <laughs> nope, just that I'm chatting. Is it still live? Is it live? Yeah, it's still live. Okay. All right, so center symmetry, what is that about? So if I look, if I cut this whole thing in half, like this, the bottom, lowest energy orbital, has to be center symmetric. Meaning, Whatever the two inside ones are, they have to be the same. It's like a mirror image, like, a, like they have to be miso. So they have to be exactly the same, and then the next one's out, exactly the same. Are they center symmetric? Yeah. And uh, Brie, what would you guess the next one should be? Um. <coughs> center, do you think it's gonna be center symmetric again? Yeah. It's gonna be center anti-symmetric. And now whenever I say that, it always makes me think anti-Semitic. No, we're not being anti-Semitic. This is actually discovered by a lot of brilliant uh, Jewish men. And, you know, <laughs> center anti-Semitic, not Semitic. Okay, so we have zero. Uh, uh, we have zero nodes, center symmetric. One node, center anti-Semitic. Next up, Chris, what's this one going to be? Center symmetric. Yeah, it just alternates. And then the last one. Center anti symmetric. Good. Uh, all right. So now with these nodes and center symmetry thing, we can now do the Sudoku and we can figure out how to fill in the rest of it. So and then when you're wondering too you know, how how to do it, you can just start guessing and then fix it. And then it's, it's pretty easy. So for instance, uh, what do you think, Hyung? What do you want to put here? Do you want me to shade the top or the bottom? If I shade the top right here, does this give me a node? Yes. And then, how do I have to shade this to be center anti-symmetric? I'd have. Well, that would make it center symmetric, huh? So if I shade the top right here, I would only have one node, but my center anti-symmetric. They're anti-symmetric. See how they're opposite the outside? The insides have to be opposite. So that's okay. We, we guessed wrong to start, but that's fine. We just erase it. Just draw it again, all right? And I'll, I'll, uh, I'm videoing uh, Hyung, so I'll just edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so now we need to fill in the second one. It's like Sudoku. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Hyung, I'd like to ask you a question today. How should I fill in this one? <laughs> Bottom one? Okay, yeah, we'll try that. Why not? Just try it, see if it works. <laughs> Is there a node there? No, no. Okay, so but now this center one has to be anti-symmetric here. So how do I have to shade this? Top. Yeah, they have, it has to be opposite. So now my outer are opposite. Anti-symmetric, anti-symmetric. Okay, now are my nodes correct? Do I have a node here? No. Do I have a node here? Put that as a dotted line. Do I have a node here? No. Oh, so that's it. That's the answer. It's got the one node, center anti center. <coughs> and I'm glad you picked, um, I'll edit this out too. I'm glad you picked wrong so that you could see the process because not everybody else is brilliant as you. They might have figured it out and they get it wrong later. You know? <laughs> I'll definitely edit that part out. Okay, so next up, uh, molecular orbital three. Uh, how are we going to fill this one in, Tiffany? What do you want to do? Oh, before we even start, it needs to be center symmetric. Are the outside ones center <laughs> symmetric right now? Yeah. It is. Okay, how do you want to fill this one in? Top or bottom? Bottom. Bottom, okay. So if I go bottom there, then to be center symmetric, this has to be bottom as well, huh? Did that give me two nodes? Nah, uh -huh. we're guessing wrong a lot today. It's okay, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me uh, fill this in. Okay, so now I'm going to do the next row, and I want to pick somebody I haven't asked a question of yet. So, Tiffany, uh, what do you think? Should I fill the top or the bottom? Top. Top, okay, good. 
And I feel, if I fill in the top there, it's got to be center symmetric. So do I fill this in this <coughs> top as well? Okay, so I've got symmetric on the outside, symmetric on the middle. Good, and now how many nodes? Do I have a node here? Yes. Yes. Do I have a node there? No. Here? Yeah, isn't that nice? Seeing it? Okay. And then finally, Nick, what am I going to do here? I've got, are they anti-symmetric on the outside, Nick? Yes. Yes. And then, how do you want me to fill this one in? Top, okay. And if I fill in the top, it needs to be anti-symmetric here, so what is it? Bottom, okay. This one, actually, this, this top one's easy because it just alternates. Bottom, top, bottom, top. And does that give you the correct number of nodes? Do I have a node here? Do I have a node here? Do I have a node here? Yeah, three nodes. Not too bad, huh? The top ones just alternates. The bottom ones all in phase. Maybe these two are the only ones you gotta like try a little bit. Yeah. For the center symmetric, do the outside ones have to be symmetric too, or is it just the inside? Both outside and inside. So yeah, so look at this. Center symmetric, right? Outside symmetric, right? Inside symmetric. Now anti symmetric. Outside anti symmetric, right? Top bottom. Top bottom, anti symmetric. And then this one, it's gotta be center symmetric all the way across. Symmetric on the outside, symmetric on the inside. Anti-symmetric, so it's like all the way through. Um, and now, well, I'll say one other thing too, the bond order on these guys. Pretty interesting, okay. So this lowest orbital, the lowest energy one, um, it has one, two, three <coughs> bonding interactions. Can you see that? I'm trying to think of the best way to write it. It's got like a, I'll say it like a plus one. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to complicate this diagram too much, but we'll see. Plus one bonding interaction there, plus one there, plus one there. So what's the bond order? Three. Next, next one, is this a bonding interaction? Plus one, what about the middle? What do you think I should do there? Negative one from Sarah. Okay, we'll do it that way. Negative one, and this one? Plus one. Plus one, yeah. So, um, what do you think the bond order of this is? One. Yeah. Over, it's still overall bonding, even though it has one anti-bonding node. Okay. What about this one? What do I put, uh, Raphael? What do I put here? Negative one. Negative one here? Plus one. Yeah, here. Negative one. What do you think the bond order is? One. Yeah. So it turns out these guys overall are bonding orbitals, the two low ones. Orbits. Does this orange show up on, on Twitch? So it's an overall bonding orbital with a bond order of three. This next one, what do you think? Overall bonding or, or not? Bonding, yep. And then the next one, it's called anti-bonding. This is an anti-bonding orbital. This will destabilize the molecule. When an electron goes into that orbital, it makes the molecule less stable, more reactive. All right, and then what about this guy, Nishida? What should I put here? Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Anti-bonding. Yeah. So that one's a real high energy orbital. Yeah. yeah. So when you're looking at this and you're trying to visualize it, you can kind of think, you know, at least personally, I always like thinking about that electron cloud mm -hmm. that's like surrounding the whole molecule. Mm -hmm. So when it has bonding happening, that electron cloud is evenly distributed or maybe semi-evenly distributed between all the different atoms. But then when you look at something that's anti-bonding, those clouds are starting to separate into like individual little clouds. The so nodes are kind of chopping it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the nodes are actually pushing the atoms apart. 
And it's kind of weird. You'll have like, you have this bonding overlap, orbital, orbital, which is being overlapped by that one. So there's electrons in this guy, in this orbital, and in this one, and they're like kind of just there. I don't know, there's a probability of finding them here or there. It's weird. But so now, uh, after we've gone through and we've made up the diagram, now we have to decide uh, where our ground state configuration would be. Yeah, here? Or are you just stretching? Oh, I was just stretching. No problem. And now, so for this one, um, how many pi electrons do we have? So, how many electrons are in the pi bonding between carbon one and two? In the isolated. Two electrons there, and how many here? Two. So we have how many pi electrons? Four pi electrons. And so we just start filling them in by the, the off ball principle, remember that? So you, you fill in the lowest energy orbital, you fill in one electron, <coughs> and then did you do this in general chem before? And then how do I fill in the next electron? Does it go up here? No. no. It goes back here still? Yeah. Do I draw it the same? No. No, it has to spin, so I have to. The opposite, right? So I've got two of my four. What do I do next, Daniel? Go to little two. Yep. Fill those in. And now that's all four. So this is my ground state configuration. So the molecule has two electrons in the lowest energy orbital, two in the next. They're both bonding. And uh, helps hold the molecule together. Remember last lecture I was talking about the partial pi bond when I looked at the resonance? Does this also support the idea of a partial pi bond here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. what part of it? Uh, three and one. Three and one? I was thinking about the orbitals here. Which one of these suggests there is some pi bonding there? Molecular orbital one. Molecular orbital one, yeah. Because you can see the bonding between carbon two and three there. Isn't that cool? Uh, three. Two and three? Is that what you meant? Oh, no. Um, three. Molecular orbital three. Oh, yeah, it shows some bonding there, too. You're right. But in the ground state configuration, there's no electrons here. So, But I, I like what you're saying. But, but right now, it's not, it doesn't have any electrons there. So these right now in the ground state, these are just like the potential if the molecule is excited where those electrons might be. Yeah, and that, that's actually... What happens when uh, if you send uh, energy that corresponds to this type, this energy gap here, this quantity, <coughs> quantized amount of energy, or quantity, quantum mechanics, you can excite one of the electrons up to that orbital. You think it'll be as stable if I have one electron here and one there? No, because I started filling in an anti-bonding orbital, which is pushing the atoms apart. No. Okay, so. Let's see if you can do another one. This is basically the same thing. Yeah, here. So does the shaded part of the orbital means like there are no electrons there? Oh no, it has to do with the phase. Like, you know, in, in math you have like X y-axis and you can have like a sine wave you know that stuff yeah and like, like you could think of this as the not shaded say and this is shaded so if you're adding this to another sine wave that's like that when we add this part to that part they cancel out yeah. So it's related to the wave particles of electrons. And that's what's so confusing, right? There's wave particles of these electrons. What the wave properties are? Oh, wave properties. And then there's particle properties. And that's just crazy, right? Like why would a so why would a baseball shaded. travel like in a wave, right? Yeah. So, so the shaded part means it's just the phase. Phase, yeah. It's related to this wave properties in space. Thank you. Okay, so now this you can see is pretty much the exact same molecule. I just threw some apples at the end. So, but try not to look at the answer for the other one and try to draw up your the pi molecular orbital diagram. So I got four p orbitals. Hmm. 
and just draw a bunch of eights. Got your molecular orbital one. And try to shade those, fill them in with their electrons, and see if you can do it correctly without looking back at your previous example. Does this work with alkynes too, or just alkenes? Um, if it's, we're just going to look at conjugated alkenes, not, not the alkynes. is pretty easy for you now. You can see I can uh, fill in, say, the left side all on the bottom. And then the right side I can shade the bottom, then the top, then the bottom, then the top. And then I know the bottom one's all in phase. And uh, I know I need to have zero nodes, one node, two node, three nodes. So zero is taken care of one node. I need to shade the bottom here and the top there. So I just have one node there. And it needs to be center anti-symmetric. And is it? It is. Mm -hmm. This one's center symmetric. This one's center anti-symmetric. So anti center symmetric, thank you. We'll just edit that out. I right, centers. I'd rather do push-ups than have to edit it out. <laughs> Center symmetric. So I think I'm gonna have to go this way and this way to get there. It is my two nodes, huh? And then this one, it's alternating, and it should be center anti-symmetric with three nodes. One, two, three. Got it. And then I fill in the electrons. There's four. One, two, three, four. Not too bad, right? Does anybody kind of like it? So 
Something different at least, yeah? Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay, and does anybody also think, like, why are we doing this? Like, what's the point? <laughs> we're waxing on, and then we're going to wax off. <laughs> what's the point? So uh, the reason why is we can use this to predict reactions. So, for instance, we're going to look at now. Uh, uh, did I go over too far? We're going to look at electro. say here? It says no questions. <laughs> AWL butthole? I don't know. <laughs> Filthy hobbit hole? <laughs> A lot of holes. <laughs> and remember to click your donation tab there. I think uh, big coin, V bucks, Venmo. All right, so now back to electro C Y electrocyclic reaction. These reactions are pretty interesting. You can take a molecule like the one we have here. Uh, I wonder how my recording is going too. Is it going okay? Looks pretty happy. Good. Okay, so we can take a molecule like this and see a new reaction. It's pretty cool. So, first off, are these two molecules the same? Let's look at them. So, this alkene here, is it cis or trans? Trans. What about this one, cis or trans? Trans. Trans. This one? Trans. And if I number it, like one, two, three, four, five, six, got the same number of carbons. But it's a little bit different, huh? It's rotated between what two bonds? Three and four. And this bond between three and four, is that just a single bond only? Or does it have some pi bonding? It has some pi bonding, huh? It's a partial pi bond. Okay. And since it's a partial pi bond, can it rotate just as easily as a normal full single bond? It has rotational restrictance a little bit. Rotation. Um, please contribute to Twitch subscribers to my spelling lesson. Rotational, rotational restrictions. A little bit. I mean, it just doesn't rotate quite as good as a normal single bond. There's a little bit of pi bonding. It's got to break. This molecular orbital is pi bond. It's got to break a little bit of bonding there. It can rotate, though, uh, but it's, it's restricted. So we actually give it a term. We, we start to name it like an alkene. So when you look at that, does it look more trans or cis to you along that single bond? It's a weird question. Huh? Yeah, and we don't want to call it just trans. We want to call it S trans. Why do you think it's called S trans? Sigma. Sigma, yeah. There's a sigma, it's mostly just the sigma bond. It's only got a little bit of pi bond. So we, we emphasize that. Okay, this isn't your normal pi bond. It's mostly a sigma single bond. But it's got a little bit of double bond character, 
So it's an S trans. And then, so what about this molecule? What's this one then, do you think? S cis. S cis. So these two, same molecule with the rotation along there. I wouldn't go so far as to say they're diastereomers because they they, they're in, they go back and forth. But it's uh, we refer to them as S trans and S cis. So this right now, this molecule's configuration is trans S trans trans. This one is trans S cis. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Edit that out. Okay. Trans, S, cis, trans. Trans, S, trans, trans. Okay. Got it, right? Now let's do a reaction finally. Does anybody know what time it is? Okay, we got time. So uh, we're going to put a roach hinge here on carbon two. Is that a good, you want that one there, Katie? Could have been on five, but we're going to go. Imagine this pi bond swinging away, hinging on two, and making a bond to carbon five. And then we're gonna get one more pi bond moving. What do you think is gonna happen, Katie? Is, the, is there gonna be a hinge at five? And then the other pi bond is gonna happen? Not at five. Four. Where else? Four. Okay. Imagine if I have a hinge at four. Where do you think this pi bond is gonna go? Because it has to make room for a new bond there, right? It's gonna open towards three. Towards three, huh? Because three just lost the bond. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, there's. Uh, these are electrocyclic reactions. They can happen, they can be initiated with heat or with light. We'll do one with heat first. So, what did I make here? What should I draw here, Cassidy? A what? A line. <laughs> what else? Which way? <laughs> did it did it make a ring or anything? Yes. How many atoms in the ring? Four atoms in the ring, yeah. And then uh, so let me number the ones I got. I got carbon two attached to five, and then three and four are over here. Is that correct? And then where should I put one and carbon one and carbon six? Yeah, so there's my one and my six, right? And then I need one other thing to be drawn in. What else? Do you know, Savannah? Between three and four, I made a double bond there, huh? It was just a partial double bond. That's six. Now it's a full double bond. All right, and then um, am I going to stop right there, or are we going to talk about something else? Okay, so what, what, what else am I going to address? You can see it, right? Bo, what's, what's up, Bo? What am I going to talk about here? This is the regiochemistry, right? The regiochemistry tells me I made a new bond between two and three. I mean, two and five. Got a pi bond, new one between three and four. And three. But now, what else am I going to address after regiochemistry? Stereochemistry, yeah. So I gotta figure out the stereochemistry. So where's my stereo centers? Which carbons? Two and five. Two and five, yeah. Okay. So what do you think is gonna happen, Bo? Just gut instinct. You think they're gonna be like both wedged the same way or trans? Trans? Okay. I don't know actually, <laughs> but I can figure it out. I, didn't, I don't have it memorized, but I can figure it out. And it has to do with something we've just been talking about. <coughs> We're gonna use the molecular orbital diagrams to figure out whether these should be cis to each other or trans. Okay, so there was a reason to do this Sudoku more than just number, what does it translate to? Number reading, not just number reading, <laughs> there's, there's a reason. So um, when you're using heat, 
Oh, I gotta give you a couple more terms. Huh? For heat, uh, you're gonna you look at the uh, highest occupied molecular orbital. Whole uh, squad. Okay, so um, highest occupied molecular orbital. Have you heard of these things before? So this is our lowest energy molecular orbital. This one is occupied with electrons. This one's not. So what's our highest occupied molecular orbital? Two. Two. So it's the highest occupied molecular orbital. And then there's a term for the, the next one up. Does anybody know it? I don't know if you guys Lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So for heat, we're going to use the highest occupied molecular orbital. And then we're going to also look at the reaction under light conditions. And we're going to use the LUMO for that one. Okay, so what is that talking about? I'm going to do it with a model first, molecular model here. And then we'll do it on the board together too. But Watch me with this one. <clears throat> what you need to focus on for this is your carbon two and carbon five, the ones that are coming together. So we have to look at those. So for the highest occupied molecular orbital, are carbon two and five in phase or out of phase? They're out of phase. So I'm gonna represent that with, oh, this your person. I'm gonna represent that with a gray, Bond to represent like a, oh, how did I do it on this one? I did the bottom one. Gray to represent the shaded in P orbital down here. Tell me if it ever shows up. I think on mine it just shows a frozen screen. But. And then this shaded here. Has anybody got their Twitch up? Is it working? Yeah. It is? Okay. Yeah, you're, do you see a model right now? Yeah. It's weird that I don't see it on mine. Okay, so this is my carbon two here, and then five here. I don't actually have to worry about the middle one. You see how I'm So if you look at this, what would you guess would happen? Do you think that this side, if it rotates to make the bond and brings its light phase of its pure orbital in, do you think it, the other side wants to rotate and put the dark phase so they're anti-bonding? No. They're gonna rotate this way. If the light phase comes in over here, the light phase comes in on the other side to make my ring. And then what did I get, Bo? Sister trans. trans. Is that what you guess? Yeah. It's a natural, right? <laughs> <laughs> a natural, right? Boom. <clears throat> so yeah. So and then so it can go light to light to make the trans product, or it can go the dark phase to the dark phase, and that makes the trans as well. Isn't that cool? So with the model, it really helps you to see this. And I know right now you might be like, what? I'm gonna do it on the board as well. But I want you to make up with your model kit. I'm gonna get our model kits out again. And practice this a couple times so you can really see it. Okay, so what we're gonna get then, our stereo chem is gonna be trans for this one. So I'm gonna get that plus the enantiomer. That makes sense. <clears throat> it looks like those might not be enantiomers, like they might be the same, huh? But if you flip this over, it won't look the same. You can't superimpose. If you think those are the same, make models and make sure you understand they're not. Yeah. So it doesn't have to do with uh, stability. No, this one doesn't. No, this one's more of a kinetic control. Yeah. So like thinking exams, would you like give us like the, the alkene chain and then say make the thingy? I could say what product do you get? Or I could say, hey, how do you make this? Which alkene do you need to start? We'll, 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 we'll do both. Um, oh, let me draw this out for you to another way. I want to show you on paper. So I'm going to take this molecule and rotate it this way. Are you okay with this? 
Do you see how I just twisted it? Mm -hmm. Right? Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to flip it this way so that my pi bonds are wedged out at me. And then my methyl is pointing out this way. My hydrogen's in. Can you see how I took it on the plane of the board? And I went whoop like that. Do you agree with that? And now I'm gonna throw on those P orbitals to see what's going on. This is how I'll actually do, this is how you should work the problem out on paper for the exam, just a homework practice. So you'll imagine this molecule whoop, like that. And now we have to use, since we're under heat conditions, we'll use the uh, highest occupied molecular orbital and the outer P orbitals are out of phase. So I'm gonna be out of phase like this. Right? Then I will just decide to rotate one side clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't matter. Which way do you wanna go on this one, Zach? Clockwise or counterclockwise? So if I take this pure orbital and I rotate counterclockwise, and then I focus on the methyl, when I do that rotation, is the methyl gonna be going downward or upward? What do you think, Zach? So I'm doing this. So you wanted me to go, what, this is your red methyl, right? You wanted me to go clockwise? Does the methyl go down or up? Down or up? Down, right, did you see it? Now, how, how this, as this P orbital goes, whoop, it's gonna push that methyl down. You see it? Anybody else see it? Yeah, Jeff? What happened? Can't see it on that far. Oh, oh shoot, yeah, thank you. Oh, that's good, it worked, thanks, Jeff. That should work, huh? All right, now we'll just wait 30 seconds to see if it does. <laughs> Houston, do you have a problem? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so, Jeff, I did that, right? I mean, not Jeff. I guess Jeff. I was going to go to Zach. So, Jack, I, I twisted that that way. And when I did that, which way did my... Which way did my P orbital go? My methyl's coming downward. My H is up. And my P orbital right here. So Zach, did the light or the dark phase of the P orbital come inward? Yes. Dark face came inward on that one. So, then one last question, Zach, or maybe not, a couple more last questions. Should I make this pure orbital rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Yeah, counterclockwise as well. Because I want the dark face to come in to match up, right? Yep, now the dark phase is matching up with the dark phase. And more importantly, or just as importantly maybe, Zach, does my methyl now, when this occurs, does my methyl seem like it's gonna go up or down? Up, huh? <coughs> and you can see then, it makes the pi bond back here, how you get the trans product. Isn't that cool? You like it, Harry? Not yeah. sure. Kind of taking it in still. Yeah, Jeff. They're always going to rotate the same direction like that. Nope. <laughs> Depends on the which orbital. So um, you bring me to a good question. Like uh, a lot of textbooks, and people just say uh, when you have this many pi bonds involved, and you have heat or light, you get like con rotary or dis rotary and then you kind of just memorize it. I don't like it. I think it's better to do this. You're less likely to make mistakes. So this particular rotation is referred to as con rotatory. 
because they both of them went counterclockwise. But I don't think you, if you never do that term, you can still draw the right product. But it's just, you'll see it out there. So um, you get the, that guy. How do we get the, oh, and by the way, which one is this one? Is this the, uh, this particular guy? Let's see what we got. And let's call these A and B. So is this A or B, do you think? This one's A. How do we get the, uh, the enantiomer B? What do you think, Emily? Yeah, if this goes clockwise, then the methyl will go up on this side. I'll have to go clockwise here to bring the two light phases in. And the methyl will go down. Yeah. I'll have to go clockwise here to bring the two light phases in. And the methyl will go down. That'll give me the other enantiomer. It's equally likely to happen. They're both con rotatory. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm not worried about it. I just need the outside ones. Just focus on those ones and you'll get them. Yeah. Okay. You can think of it as, oh, I got the pi bond without even considering the stuff. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, what? Uh, I'm going to put that So, if you happen to shine a photon of light at the molecule of the right energy, then you can excite an electron up one level. And if you do that, then now this is what's going to determine how your rotation is and what products you get. So that's why I say under light conditions, you'll get this, you need this one for a little. And then when it's actually here, it's got a good name. Uh, it's got, we got a nice Japanese theme. This is called a singly occupied Molecular orbital, so SOMO. <laughs> makes me think of SUMO. Sumo that's what it's so we got a SOMO singly when it has the one electron there. And now I guess that's the LUMO in this excited state. Okay, so how does that work out? <laughs> on Twitch? Do you donate actual cash money? Or is it like Twitch money? Or is it actual Bitcoin? Or yeah, it kind of goes from like real money to like a currency. On so is it like I can buy a coffee with it or I can just buy the new skin on Fortnite? I think you can like get real money out of it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait. oh, took a break, huh? Oh, low battery. I thought that might happen. Let me get this. <laughs> yeah, Twitch takes up more battery. about that right when I got here I was like uh, the battery always lasts long enough for a whole lecture mm -hmm. I don't think so when it's streaming I guess is it uh, is it on your twitch you guys on my back home on it good luck okay so here we go let's say it's got the same molecule and instead of using heat I use light I'll get the same regiochemistry Now I gotta add on the stereo tension. So I'm gonna visualize it like I twisted it and then 
I flipped it out of the plane of the page at us. So now I want to draw my P orbitals. I got to figure out their phase and see how this stuff's going to work out. So remember, um, this is how I do a shorthand of it. I just like start putting some lines on my molecular orbitals. Uh, yeah, Brie? Um, when you drew that, are those two wedges or one wedge? That's uh, see these. Imagine these double bonds are my arms like this. Okay. So these are double bonds, my arms. And then I go two edges that represent two double bonds from it. The double bond with two bonds. Okay. Kind of. That's how I was thinking of it. Okay. All right. And then so the, what I do is I consider, okay, uh, my ground state has got four pi electrons. They'll be filled in like that. So if I'm under heat conditions, I'm using this orbital. My excited state has got an electron promoted up here under light conditions. And that's going to give me my singly occupied, my SOMO. Ooh. So I got Rosomo, and then uh, I can remember that the outside P orbitals, remember how I said just fill in the bottom on one side, and then alternate on the other being in phase on the bottom. Bottom, top, bottom. Oh yeah, that's what I've got. All I need to know is the outside, huh? And I know it's a center symmetric, center antisymmetric, center symmetric. Actually, that's all I really need to know, symmetry. So I can fill in this side and this side. And that's different than before they were out of phase, antisymmetric. Okay, so Ikaika, what do you want to do on this one? Uh, Counterclockwise or clockwise? Counterclockwise. Okay. And when I do that, Ikaika, does my methyl, do you think, go down or up? Down, yeah. And methyl's going to go down. So when I do this, it's going to bring the dark phase in, huh? So how does this have to rotate to get the dark phase in? This one's got to go clockwise, huh? Yeah. I went counterclockwise on this side and clockwise on this side. So Jeff, remember your eye, do they always rotate the same way? Not always. So this one's called disrotatory. And uh, Chris, what's going to happen to the methyl? It's going to go down. Down as well. So what am I getting here? Is trans or cis? Cis. Getting the cis. Isn't that cool? Mark, when you're drawing that methyl coming off those two wedges that are representing the double bond, does the methyl need to touch both of those wedges? Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Yeah, it's kind of an, it's kind of like like here, you know. I might be a little lazy sometimes, but as long as you get the idea. Yeah. And that, like, what, are you saying like, would I mark you off if I went like that versus that? No, I'm more so just looking at that one where you're drawing the bubble over, over the top. And I'm just wondering, does that methyl need to touch both wedges or no? Doesn't matter. I, all you need to do is need to know is are they sister trans? Okay. All right. So I got that, and then would I draw up the other product, the dash dash? No, because this guy's miso, huh? So I'd only make one product in this case. Um, can you say what CCW and CW? Oh, counterclockwise. I'm going to do a really quick one at the end. Oh, man. What do you want to do? Heat or light? What would you like, Sharon? Heat or light? Light. Make it even harder. 
So what can happen here, if I number all the way around, is I can start, say, hinging up here again, bond two to seven, pi bond shifts, pi bond shifts. Hey, Twitcher holes, uh, I'm going to have this up on YouTube soon, so I'll have a better view if it's off. All right, so boom, boom, boom. I got my two stereo centers. Got to figure them out, huh? Uh, I like to think of it as... These pi bonds are wedged out, and the dough bond. It's like the whole thing's coming. It's like a longer thing, all coming out at you. <laughs> and then, Bree, if you're worried about these, just yeah. come and just practice a few. You okay. Most people do really well on the exam on these. Okay, so now I have to figure out how to, to shade these guys out. How many pi bonding electrons does this have? It's got six. Two, four. Six, and then it's gonna hit, be hit with light. Sharon said light. She's not messing around. <laughs> up here. So, is my lowest energy one? Are the orbitals symmetric or anti-symmetric? Symmetric. Center symmetric. Center anti-symmetric. Center symmetric. Center anti-symmetric. Oh, so I know how to fill these in. Just shade them opposites. Oh, Amanda. What do you want, clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise? And then what will happen to my methyl in that case? Up. And then since I went clockwise to bring the light phase in, what does this have to do, clockwise or counterclockwise? It has to go this way. Yeah, they want light to light. Uh, clockwise. clockwise again. Con rotatory, huh? What happens to my methyl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boom, boom. So what's our product? This. It's this. Oh, probably off screen for that. Pretty awesome, right? What would happen if I used heat instead? get the chance. Mm -hmm. Is it kind of fun? Do you like it? I like it. It's something different, right? Mm -hmm. It just takes practice to do a few. 